Well, the days of working for just one company and then getting a nice big pension are well and truly gone. But bigger things are coming. We're entering a world where hours are flexible, we can work from anywhere, and there may not even be a retirement age. So how do you plan for a career in a time of such uncertainty? And what are the kinds of jobs that might exist in the near future? Well, futurist Morris Misalowski has put some thought into that, and he joins me now from our Melbourne studio. Uh, Morris, welcome to the program this afternoon. Can I start just by asking you, uh, I know you've called this a time of, of great change and, and great uncertainty. What are you seeing out there? What's driving all these different changes in the job space? There's really a number of things, Nigel, that are doing it. One is that we've come out of a period that some of us call GFC, where times were a bit tough, businesses were shrinking, they were not looking to invest, and innovation wasn't big on their radar. But behind the scenes, we were really growing our technology. We were changing the world. We were adding a digital presence that we've never had before. And business behind the scenes, while we were hibernating, was changing. And coming out of it, the other end today, is a very, very different workspace, a very different world of work. And we're already seeing signs of this now with uh, the Treasurer, Joe Hockey, of course, looking to potentially uh, lift the retirement age. So that's one practical change that we're seeing. Given all this digital technology that's taking place and the digitization of different industries, what are the kinds of industries and what are the kinds of jobs that you're seeing will be created in the future? So a lot of the jobs we're seeing are the jobs where we require what I refer to as wisdom. To do the mundane, to do the ordinary tasks that we might currently do, and we're going to have to put a lot more thinking into it. So one of the big growth areas is around health and medicine. We know, for instance, that the average person, the average teenager today, will live to 120 or 150 in relatively good health. We're going to have a whole host of people living over 100. At the moment, we've got just under about 300 in Australia. And we're coming up to, in 2050, about 72,000 people over 100 years of age. So wellness, looking after ourselves, anything that works around that industry is certainly something that's going to rise and with new technologies on the horizon, we'll be able to do things that we've never been possible to do before. If we have these uh, people over 120 and 150, that kind of blows a retirement age of 70 out of the water, doesn't it? That's just uh, crazy, retiring at 70. It is. It absolutely is. And 70 worked really well. 65 worked well. We were living in a very different era, in the Industrial Revolution. What we did was pass the mantle over to somebody else to take on that work after we reached that age. Mm. But the notion of working in a linear sense, of working 9 to 5, working Monday to Friday, is not going to be the main way that we work into tomorrow. It's going to be project and task. It's going to be very much around achieving an aim and then taking flexibility around that which means that we will be working well into our 80s and 90s, not 9 to 5, not Monday to Friday, mm -hmm. maybe taking on a task here or there or a job here and there, but definitely still in the workforce active with a mind that's still useful to everybody. All right, Morris, now you put together a list of some of the jobs you think that could exist in the next 35 years. Top of that list is uh, a nanomedic. What, what is exactly a nanomedic? What does that person actually do? Yeah, Morris, I think we've just uh, lost you there for a second. So we'll just go through the list here on our end. A nanomedic is number one, a memory augmentation number two, a body part maker number three, transhumanist designer and a gene programmer. And then over the page as well, a list of, of further jobs too that uh, you can see brain augmenter and then some more interesting ones, spaceport traffic control, weather controller and domestic robot programmer. So Morris, looking at that list, as you said, health really a standout there but also robotics and genes featuring quite strongly absolutely again around that notion of getting rid of the mundane task that you and i don't want to do as human beings and pushing into that higher order looking after ourselves making sure that we're healthy that we're educated well that we have a great society around us they're the sorts of jobs that i think are going to be on the horizon for all of us so how do you plan for a career like this given that a lot of these jobs there there aren't uni degrees for them yet there aren't courses for them yet they haven't been created yet. If you're someone just entering the workforce or who will be working in the next 20 or 30 years, can you plan for changes like this? You absolutely can. It's a matter of looking at your core skills. The reality is that we will have six careers and 13 jobs in the average lifetime. We know that we're going to have to be transportable. We know that we're going to have to take our skills and move them from one career, one job to another. 
for most of us, the advice is the one that we've been given all along, and that is to figure out what we're particularly good at, what is it that gives us joy in life, and then to look at the ways that we will manifest those. I always say to my clients and audiences, it's not important how we do it, it's important what we do. The how evolves over time, it changes. Newspapers become digital, all sorts of things move on, but the core skills around them are the same. And that's really what we have to practice, making sure we have those core, saleable skills that we can easily transfer from one career. What do you make then of this ongoing debate between uh, manufacturing and services and resources and our economy? Where are the bulk of the jobs in the future going to be? I think they're actually going to be more around services. We know that lots of things are changing on the horizon. Manufacturing will still be necessary, but 3D print is on the horizon. I think we're going to see more distributed manufacturing down that road. So a lot of the industries that you and I talk about today are in for that evolution. And what we need to do is to listen to yesterday but speak to tomorrow. Make sure that our thinking about those industries is relevant to the way that they're going to evolve. And if we look at that and we work our way forwards, we'll be able to find the path that makes most sense. But clinging on to what we knew yesterday to be, just for the sake of it, really doesn't serve us well into the future. All right, Morris, so even though things are changing, that advice, the same, find what you're good at and stick to it. Good advice. Thanks for the update today. Our pleasure.